just on uh, Jordanian Airlines now. Thankfully, there's plenty of leg room, so that's always good. That's always important and about to take off. Look at this place, isn't that absolutely gorgeous? This is where we are, it's the Dead Sea you see behind me. And that's a completely different country than the other side. You can probably guess who that is. I'm in my hotel room, it's all rather nice. I've got a dressing area there for some reason. I don't know why, I don't know what that's for. Two beds, of which I shall only be using one, I should imagine, and something more. This is a nice bit here, look, balcony. Check it out. And that gorgeous, gorgeous view. So what are we actually doing here in Jordan? Well, here we're going to be doing an epic drive tomorrow from here in Amman all the way down to the famous and legendary city of Aqaba. And we'll be driving a bunch of Ford trucks and SUVs, everything from an EcoSport right up to an F-150 and including the new 2016 Ford Edge. And if all of that is not enough, the day after we'll be taking these trucks and these vehicles all the way up to the mystical and magical city of Petra. And I've long been looking forward to taking a look at that place. Now this road trip was a tribute to a pivotal event in the Arrow Revolt in this part of the world 100 years ago. This is Peter O'Toole as T.E. Lawrence, better known as Lawrence of Arabia in the movie by the same name. And this is, in fact, the real T.E. Lawrence himself. Ostensibly, we were retracing his famous march to Aqaba through the stunning vistas of Wadi Rum in an audacious attack from the land through what was considered impassable desert at the time, as from the sea the town was fortified against assault. Capturing Aqaba was deemed important to allow British ships to safely pass with supplies for the Arab revolt against the ruling Ottoman Turks. Lawrence corralled Arab forces with a rallying cry for independence or just plain buying their loyalty with the 22,000 British gold sovereigns he was carrying, while simultaneously fooling the enemy into believing the target was actually Damascus. After weeks and months of a grueling journey on horseback, during which they lost far more men to snakes and scorpions than they ever would in fighting, whilst attacking and sabotaging bridges and parts of the Hejaz railway along the way, the battle for Aqaba was fought at a Turkish blockhouse at Abu al Lasan, about halfway between Aqaba and the town of Man. With support from British Navy ships bombarding the town from the sea, apparently there were only two casualties amongst the 5,000 strong Arab force, whilst 300 of the 450 Turks were captured and then killed. Hi guys, here we are, introduce us with Jamil and Yasser. Yasser, and who have we got back here? And we are off on an epic drive now. We're going to go down to, we're going to head towards Aqaba via Wadi Ram. We're in a convoy of what? Nine cars, I think, ten cars. We're going down, all Ford, all journalists. And uh, yeah, it's going to be one hell of a spectacular day. What do you reckon, guys? It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. And thus began our 300 kilometer journey heading south aboard the Ford Ranger Wild Track, initially on Route 65 with the spectacular Dead Sea on our right. Now, Captain Thomas Edward Lawrence was an extraordinarily resilient and determined man who, as an archaeologist, had traveled and worked extensively in Arabia, even learning to speak the language and had been recruited at first into the British military as a spy and then saboteur, rising up the ranks to become an officer and a diplomat British liaison to the Arab leaders. He was a tough and hardy soul that adopted the way of the desert and once wrote, No man can live his life and emerge unchanged. He will carry, however faint, the imprint of the desert, the brand which marks the nomad, and he will have within him the yearning to return, weak or insistent according to his nature. For this cruel land can cast a spell which no temperate clime can match. We car journalists, on the other hand, are a bunch of wimps, so we were to forego the camels and scorpions for luxury resorts and the air-conditioned comfort of the stupendous lineup of Ford SUVs and trucks that would serve as our steeds over a course of a day's run from the Dead Sea to Aqaba. So what's the Ford connection? This incredible and rare footage of T.E. Lawrence, who was clearly a petrol head, driving a Ford Model T in Wadi Rum with King Fessel. Amazing. You can see our social media posts from the event by searching hashtag go further in Arabia, hashtag visit Jordan, and hashtag MME on the road. So here we are, we're at a petrol station somewhere in uh, Tafila, I think, district. 
We've been driving uh, 8.30, it's now 11 o'clock. So we're driving about two and a half hours. We've been up and down some mountain roads and really spectacular, spectacular scenery. And you know, here's my driving partner, Walking around. Gandalf the Little. Uh, <laughs> and um, there we go. Hello. More people, more people on the trip, more people on the trip. trip. Look at this. We're on road trips. Richie, the, the legendary Richie, there he is. And uh, we're just taking a little bit of a breather here before we head on. And uh, we're going down towards Radhi Rum uh, with this spectacular lineup of Ford products you see here. And we were driving the Orange Ranger. I don't know where that is. We weren't driving this truck, which is quite spectacular in itself. We were driving, oh, there it is. There's our Ranger over there. I think we might be getting back into that one. Fantastic time in the Ranger. We drove up that fantastic mountain road. That was great fun, wasn't it? Definitely a lot of fun. So now we've moved to the expedition. So now we're on a proper expedition, aren't we? Here we are. We are descending upon Aqaba. We are about 80 kilometers away with, on this spectacular road that's running alongside the north perimeter of Wadi Rum. Unbelievable vistas, unbelievable scenery. It is just so beautiful here, so spectacular. And here we are. We're car number six now in this convoy of Fords as we are retracing the steps of, of course, Lawrence of Arabia. And uh, we're gonna take Aqaba, but we're gonna have a spot of lunch before, spot tiffin. Spot tiffin, I think. <laughs> a little bit tiffin, I think. Can't take a city on an empty stomach, can we? Nah. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> we were racing for cars as we're about to set off after a short break here at this little uh, cafe and gift shop got a nice cup of tea from there and a wonderful little desert castle bazaar actually very nice little uh people fighting falling over they're still fighting in the car two guys in the driver's seat two guys in the driver's seat very very dodgy stuff going on i don't know let's go <laughs> just show you around this beautiful gift shop fantastic fantastic paraphernalia lovely stuff there and uh, yeah, I picked up a few items myself, as you can see. Couldn't resist. Lovely place. This is a gentleman that served me. Hello, what's your name? Hi, my name is Oni. How long have you worked here? We are at a new shop around three months ago. Three months ago? Yes. Beautiful shop. Thank you, sir. Lots of cool stuff here. Welcome. I wish I had more money because I'd buy more things. <laughs> we are. We should to thank you to be in our country, sir. <laughs> thanks so much. Welcome thank to you. Jordan and thanks for coming, sir. Thanks so much. That's You're fantastic. Happy Soon after this stop, we headed off-road to take in the jaw-dropping vistas of the fabled Wadi Rum where, as well as obviously the movie Lawrence of Arabia itself, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Prometheus and The Martian, amongst many others, have been filmed. The rugged rock formations and seared desert surface of the amazing Valley of the Moon cut into the sandstone and granite rock of Southern Jordan both enchant and inspire awe. One of the rock formations was named the Seven Pillars of Wisdom in the 1980s after the book by Lawrence inspired by his adventures here, though it only appears to have five pillars. Anyway, he described the Wadi Rum as vast, echoing and godlike. Matt Damon, when he was filming here for The Martian, said, I was in awe of that place. It was really, really special. One of the most spectacular and beautiful places I have ever seen and like nothing I've ever seen anywhere else on Earth. So we've just been driving to, through the middle of Wadi Rum and all the things that they say about this place. I mean, there's only a little bit of it that you can see here. We've just come across an impasse actually, quite literally, I'll show you why. It's very, very dusty and cloudy, so you can't really make out in the distance. Maybe over here you can see a little bit, if you can just about make out. But it is incredibly spooky, incredibly majestic, totally awe-inspiring. And this here is why we've come to a little bit of an impasse, because we had to get under this bridge, which, uh, which is for, we saw a train go over this bridge just a few minutes before. And the sand underneath the bridge is a bit soft, so uh, one of the guys has managed to get stuck and they're just trying to manipulate uh, the uh, cars and stuff, do a little bit of digging to get that poor thing out. But, uh, but generally we've been having a really good run here in Wadi Rum. Aha! That rhymes! Check it out! And uh, we've been out in this, in this expedition. It's been a great companion and uh, oh, truly, truly spectacular. Can't wait to bring you some more. So it's three o'clock and we finally now found our camp. It's called the Captain's Desert Camp, in fact. 
and this is where we're stopping. It's not very, not very far at all from the seven pillars that I was showing you earlier uh, that inspired uh, T. Lawrence so much and he wrote that book, Seven Pillars of Wisdom. This place looks amazing. Look how green it is and right in the setting of these stupendous and awe-inspiring rock formations. So we promised quite a unique lunch. We're all a bit hungry now, so uh, yeah, can't wait. It's all rather quaint and rustic, isn't it? Check it out. Bit of music. Ah, oh, there's a man playing music. So what we're doing here is uh, they're cooking our lunch. Or they cooked our lunch, so now they're digging it out. So if we see there's one here, looks like a natural made oven with bricks. And I guess they put it all down there, leave it for a few hours and out it comes all cooked. Get a bit closer, as close as we dare without falling into the, oh my God. Oh, houses. <laughs> That's the ultimate underground barbecue right there. <laughs> Whoa, there's that, and that wasn't all. Whoa, <laughs> that's serious. And and that's what we'll be eating. <laughs> In 1917, Lawrence was involved in raiding trains and stations with armed tribesmen. So fittingly, after our hearty lunch, we were scheduled to go loot a train, complete with armed riders on horseback, Ottoman guards defending and us attacking the train in our fords. Donning my Arab headgear that I picked up at the Desert Castle Bazaar gift shop just before we headed off road into Wadi Rum, I really got into the part and perhaps just a little carried away. Here we are, we're all set and waiting. The horsemen are over there. Here's the gang. Where oh, they go? Oh, we've got oh, we've got we got Jimmy the pirate. Oh, we got what's your what's your what's your handle? Uh, Rashid the Arabia. Rashid the Arabia and we've got Florence of Arabia. Florence Arabia and we've got badass shake. Alright? Well this is going down, this is gonna happen. Stay with us! In fact, this is a must-do if you go there as a tourist. Head to the restored Wadi Rum station on part of the old Hijaz railway. You not only get to ride on authentically restored train carriages, but then fall victim to a raiding party attack complete with replica Rolls-Royce armored car. It's spectacular and dramatic to witness and thrilling to feel like you're an extra in a big historical action movie. Oh, what is that thing? It's like a mini That's tank. That's a Rolls Royce! That's a Rolls Royce! The old Rolls Royce armored cars! Where's my phone? Have you got it? Yeah, I'm filming. Oh, you're filming with it? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, that guy died. <laughs> oh, look at the pansies. This is it. Look at those pansies. They didn't really put much of a fight. No. <laughs> we surrender! <laughs> hey! We got the train, now we're just waiting for instructions. <laughs> We've captured them. We've captured the train. We've captured the train. Now that is an old Rolls Royce, or what appears to be an old Rolls Royce armored vehicle. We've got gunfire. We've got people being shot off the train. We've got Motorati is dead. We've eliminated <laughs> Motorati, it's gone. So. <laughs> Here come the flag horsemen! The flagmen are here! Yay! Yeah. Is he gonna ride back? Yeah, he's missed the train. <laughs> <laughs> the, loot, the loot is here! Clearly, clearly overshot it. <laughs>
train. There it is. These are our victims. They are our victims. We stopped them. We broke them. This is the old train. Look at the carriages. Aren't they beautiful? I don't know if you can see it. There's too much sunlight in the background. And these, this is our this is my compadre from Prime. We will take Aqaba, we will take it today, it will happen! Right now! It's a very long day, we finally make it to our hotel rooms. Got a nice look, hang on, I'm gonna see the whole party. So we had an epic day yesterday, a long, long drive from the Dead Sea all the way down to Aqaba. On the way, we checked out Wadi Rum, we raided the train, we ate local food, and had a fantastic old time. Drove three different vehicles yesterday, the Ford Ranger, uh, the Ford Expedition, and at the end of the day, Ford uh, F-150. We'll be getting back into the F-150 for today, where we've now got a two-hour run from here, the Kapinski in Aqaba, down to Petra, up to Petra, I should say, uh, which is a third of the way, about a third of the way back up to Amman from here. And uh, we're looking forward to looking forward to seeing Petra. I haven't seen that before, so we're really looking forward to that. So we're just about to head off to Aqaba, and I'm driving this beast to King Ranch F-150. Check it out, EcoBoost. Should be a laugh. We have taken Aqaba, <laughs> and now we will take Petra. <laughs> So on the way to Petra, and we've just stopped at a petrol station here. I've been out, I've been driving this pickup truck behind me, the F-150. Quite nice, very stable, good on a motorway run, that's for sure, and it's fairly economical. It's showing about 660 kilometers still, and we've done like a, almost an hour's driving in it, in the full tank. So uh, yeah, really, really good. But uh, look at this, look at this. Terrible music, terrible. Don't, ah, it's not my kind of stuff. No, 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 let's move on. But yeah, so we're looking forward to this trip, and uh, we're doing, um, Hopefully getting our hands on the edge at some point, that would be quite cool. But um, really looking forward to getting to Petra. But right now, what incredible weather we are having here in Jordan right now. I mean, it's almost, I mean, you see me in this shirt, in this very light shirt, but it's almost, almost verging on jacket weather. Yes, the sun is shining, but there's a wonderful breeze blowing. We've been driving with the windows down. It's absolutely fantastic. What do you think of the new edge, by the way? So we're on the road to Petra, but we're still pretty close to Wadi Rum, aren't we? As we can see from these incredible mountains. Just look at the cloud cover in the mountains today. What do you guys think of the road trip so far? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah? It's amazing. It's been so amazing. amazing. Yeah. What do you think of the truck? The truck is very good. Performance and uh, interior is very good. That's a thumbs up for the King Ranch from there. What about you? The weather is Ainsley has to say the truck is good because he works for Ford, otherwise he'll get sacked, so... <laughs> well done, man, brilliant! So we, are, we finally got into the edge over the three days, and now we're almost near the end of this fantastic, epic road trip, and we're finally in the new edge. Jamil pinched the wheel before I could get to it, so... Yeah, good for him. Now, Sue, tell us about this car. What's, what's new about the new edge? Well, the new edge is all new and uh, this is a, a new generation of the model so it's all new from the ground up so everything from the suspension through the interior design and obviously the exterior look we're adding two new powertrains so it will have the standard two liter eco boost engine and then uh, the new the sport model will come with a 2.7 uh, eco boost as well with tremendous power and then you obviously have the already existing 3.5 v6 so three engines all with a six-speed uh, transmission with paddle shifts for more uh, sporty uh, performance. So end of the road for the Ford trip now here at Petra. We've abandoned the cars now and we're heading off 
towards Petra. We're going to go have a look there and then back to Dubai. But it's been a fantastic trip. Wonderful, wonderful, epic three day journey across Jordan. Uh, fabulous chance to try all these cars in real world elements and using them as tourists would. So really, really a cool concept and a great way of doing it. Uh, got very limited time in the age, just a, a few kilometers coming up the hill here to Petra. Um, yeah, I felt really good, really compact, great to drive, good fun. So that's my group. I'm heading off. Speak to you guys later. Just here waiting to sort our tickets and stuff out to get into the Petra Visitor Center. Let's check this out. Just 10 minutes into this walk or 5 minutes into the walk. Look at this. Wow. One of the softest rocks is because they carry it in the road by withering great wall winds. And that's what tells them to carve their monuments here. Their way of carving. So you see the tunnel, this is actually pretty much a moat because this was actually where the water flowed through this bank. In fact, the path that we've just walked down is initially a riverbed. Look at that behind that, you can see the beginning of the canyon. It looks spectacular from up here, right next to the gift shop over here. I won't be tempted, I ain't got any money left. Latin occupied by an earthquake was completely here on its place at least till 1839 because David Robert, a Scotch explorer, left us 14 of his paintings from his journey to the city in that year. This is a copy of one of them when it was complete. And one of the niches inside the gate, right below you can see remains of the original dam. As you can see it was with the crater and the left side was the damaged part where they could to climb and then to continue their tour to uh, the city. We also accepted Visa and MasterCard back then. Look <laughs> 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 at these centennials, they've been standing guard here for centuries. They certainly look like it. Look at these guys. It's absolutely incredible walking down here, it's just beyond belief. I mean, look at this place. You don't know where to look. You go forward, you look at that stunning thing. You go back, look at that, how foreboding is that? And yet, you know that there's a path through there. Absolutely incredible. Oh, every time you come around the corner, it just gets more and more spectacular. And this is just the pathway to Petra. It's known as the Red Rose City, and by looking at the color of these rocks, which represent the various minerals that are embedded within, you can see why. Now, all of both just decoration and the only visible bit before the Swiss project which had been done here between 1997 up to 2000 and the goal of it was to clean the canyon from the dirt which was rising between 4 up to 7 meters. So, uh, the only visible bit before that project was the hump, the black part of the verse coming. The rest below this line was hidden and that's why the crazy Swiss engineer who was the director of the project done big mistake here. He used to work with shovels, bulldozers, trucks, night's time without experience. Finally, after a fair bit of walking, we sketch our first glimpse of Petra. There it is. A bit of shouting going on. So after about 20, 30 minutes of walking, we've just come through this final little crevice and look at what's spreading out in front of us. That is just absolutely extraordinary. Unbelievable. Wow. Just wow. Just breathe in, isn't this incredible? They just pan you around, so there's like caves and stuff over here. There it is. There is the majestic. This name comes from the local mythology of the people. Uh, one of their mythologists said that the whole site was under the control of the pharaohs of Egypt and that the pharaoh was in control, hidden his gold or treasure at the solid air or the jar at the top of the monument. When the treasure hunters heard about the mythology, they began to arrive here and they start shooting with their gun machines in the jar and the statue in the central part. So they tried to break the jar and to get the gold out of it. I'll tell you what, the walk back from Petra is not an easy one. Slightly uphill, quite a long way. And with bits of quite bright, rather hot glaring sun now.
Oh gosh, oh. Dear, dear. Ah, back at the gate. Gosh, that was a tough slog.